I'm Jim Allison. I'm the Chairman of the Department of Immunology and Director of the Immunotherapy Platform at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. As an immunologist, you're so close to you know, medical issues, and especially cancer, that it's, 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 you have to be thinking about it. In my case, I thought about it a lot because my mother died of cancer when I was about 10 years old, and two of her brothers died of cancer uh, when I was an adolescent, and then my, uh, one of my brothers died of, of metastatic prostate cancer a few years ago, and my other brother has prostate cancer as well. And so there's been a lot of impact, and I and, I've, and I had it was I had prostate cancer, but it was caught early. So, but anyway, I've seen firsthand the, the impact that cancer and the therapies can have, you know, on, on people and their families. I first got interested in immunology when I was in graduate school, and T cells had just been discovered. They were somewhat controversial, but uh, I wasn't trained in immunology. Actually, I was trained in biochemistry. But when I took my first faculty position. I decided I was, I was really intrigued by the immune system and trying to learn how you could have this wonderful thing of cells and cyber molecules that go throughout your body looking for things that have gone awry and managed to protect you and, and not destroy you <laughs> somehow. And so I was really curious how that worked. So I basically spent almost my whole career in immunology trying to understand uh, what regulates T cells, what turns them on, what turns them off, just exactly how they, how they work. By the late 1980s, it was clear that the antigen receptor, which is kind of like the ignition switch on a, on a T cell, um, and this, the structure of that I, I, I worked out in the early 80s, actually. But by the late 80s, it became obvious that that wasn't enough, that just having that on, it wasn't just an on-off switch, there are other signals. And so one of the first things we did was to uh, in that area was to identify what was called a co-stimulatory receptor, this molecule called CD28. It's kind of like the gas pedal. You have to get a signal through it to actually get T cells to start doing something. And uh, then there was this other molecule that had already been cloned that was very highly related to CD28 called CTLA-4. And the question was, what did that do? And it was very controversial. But uh, a colleague of mine at the University of Chicago, Jeff Bluestone, and, and my lab both proposed that it was actually not another gas pedal, but it was it was the brakes, it was a molecule. And so I got very intrigued by that, but as, as soon as I realized that, I thought, hmm, maybe one of the reasons that, you know, I mean, why do you have this? Well, you have this molecule because your immune system has got to stop. You know, you go from having just a few cells to having 10 million cells in a few days so that you can fight off infections or try to attack cancer cells or whatever. But anyway, so, uh, you, you've got to stop that process at some point. So uh, that's, that's, we figured that out and, and was pretty convinced. I mean, we were, it was still a big argument in the field at the time, but there were, the, there were others who thought it was another uh, co-stimulator, another gas pedal. But anyway, so when we figured out that it was not, that it was, that it was the brakes, and there was this program that was hardwired, you know, to turn on the brakes gradually and stop the process, then I, then I had the thought, well, I wonder if we could make the immune system better at attacking cancer by just temporarily disabling the brakes, basically keep the immune system from turning itself off for an extended period of time until, you know, they had a time to eliminate tumors. And that was the, that was the basic idea. It was, it was understanding the basic biology and then making the leap to say, well, we can manipulate this to our advantage to treat cancer. And it turned out it worked. The ACR, I think, is probably the, the most powerful and, and important you know, single organization in, in, in the area of cancer research for, for a few reasons. One is that uh, it really encompasses the whole, the whole field of, of, of cancer from basic biology, um, cancer biology, through immunotherapy, through you know, fundamental science all the way up to um, you know, current treatments and brings people together to discuss the latest advances and has a lot of outreach programs to in, in, interest people. I think well, my, my election as a member of the Academy uh, it was, was quite an honor since it was by so the members are selected by their peers but I think it was also a validation of, of respect for the field of immunotherapy which you know wasn't always there and so it's an, in a way it's an acknowledgement that immunotherapy has arrived and uh, it's something that uh, is of value and, and should be rewarded. I guess I'm a frustrated physician or something, I don't know, but, uh, you know, working with mice, it's not as quite as rewarding, you know, 
when you cure a mouse of cancer, they'll still bite gotcha. you. When it really, I guess, had the impact on me was when I started meeting the cancer patients. Uh, my colleague Jed Walchuk, for example, called me. Um, it was in the early days and to meet him in the outpatient center at Memorial Sloan Kettering when I was there and to meet this young woman that had just been told that she'd been free of cancer for a year after getting the ipilimumab, the, the, the drug that I helped develop. And that was an incredible moment. 